Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, with Speed Freaks coming out this weekend, <laughs> um, I thought it would be fun to do something for October. And we'll tackle one of these guys from the uh, Speed Freaks kit. Now, the Orc Bikers, these are actually the old kits. Well, I say old. Well, they are old now, aren't they? Goodness me. But they're still a lot of fun. And you're going to get some of these if you're picking up Speed Freaks. Or honestly, if you've got any self-respect in Orc Army, you're going to have some bikes to go and clobber the good guys, bad guys, to gets on the other side of the table as quickly as you can. So let's get a look at how we're going to get this done. This is a nice, simple technique, which gives you a really cool finish, I think. Now to begin painting them, I've sprayed them with black. You're going to go ahead and get these out of the Speed Freaks box. They'll be in a colored plastic, either red or yellow. Um, but if you've got an old kit, for example, it'll just be gray plastic. I would recommend spray it black anyway for what we're going to do. If you do have any bits that you miss, you can go back over with a little bit of black, but I managed to get everything here. I've also gone and put them on a smaller base. This is the one that they, uh, they came with, but I've just dabbed a little bit of super glue to hold them in place while I'm painting, and that'll be fine. All the paints are going to be linked down in the description below, so just follow along as I get into this. What we'll start off with is some lead belcher. Now, as always, just adding a little bit of water into your lead belcher, you might find that for most of these areas, you're going to need to go over with just one coat. Uh, there is a lot of metal on these things, so take your time. Uh, just pick out areas that you want to be metallic. So I'm just going around now, just bopping, you know, that'll be black, that'll be metal, and so forth. Okay, this is more time consuming than difficult, but go around now, and fill in all these areas that you want to be silver. Now you might notice here, there's a few places that I've deliberately skipped. I don't want to just do the whole thing in metal. And what we're going to do now is grab some Balthazar gold, which is a nice deep brassy color, and just paint in a few small areas, just anywhere that we want to break up the color a little bit and add a bit of warmth. Uh, this is really more useful if you're doing, say, for example, goths or the like, uh, because, you know, that straight black and white color scheme can be a little bland. What comes next is some Necron Compound. We're actually going to dry brush the entire model with this stuff. I've got myself one of my little cheap brushes here. Uh, you can use a medium or a large dry brush, whichever you're more comfortable with. But all I'm going to do is just lightly flick along the edges of pretty much everything, because I want a random metallic edge to everything. Okay, you'll see I'm not being terribly careful. It's all over the place on the camera here. <laughs> Uh, but the point is that anywhere that I miss, I want it to be dinged up metal, okay? And just doing this quick dry brush is a really quick way of getting into that. It'll also help blend in the uh, Balthazar gold that we've done. So take your time, go around, and remember every surface. You don't deliberately have to do the orc skin, though, but all of the bike, including the tires, just cruise around now with this Necron compound. Now you're going to want to be a little more generous with this than you might think because we're going to do a fair bit to it later. But you can see now we've got this battered up, you know, dusty silver all over the bike. Like I said, you don't have to paint the orc, but if you do happen to hit him, it doesn't matter. We're going to fix that up now. I've got myself some wag flesh in my million year old pot there and just a little bit of water. You can probably do this with a small base brush or something and just get into basing his skin. You will probably find, for this fella, you're going to need to do two thin coats over a black base coat. But don't worry too much. Just go around now, finishing his skin. Now, personally, it never ceases to amaze me. The point when you get the skin on, he starts looking that much more finished. If you were a golf player, you might stop painting now. <laughs> no, I kid. Obviously. Or maybe I don't. Anyway, grab yourself a little bit more fang brown, and we're going to paint all of the leather areas. So, straps on his shoulders... Uh, these things around his, his hands, anything that's holding on, bits of metal, uh, these bits too. You might want to do these. I'm going to do these Rackhouse Flesh later personally, but it's up to you. Cruise around now and just grab anything you want to be brown leather. Now any cables and the like, I'm going to quickly do these with corn red. You don't need to be careful with these at all. Uh, Screamer Pink. Might also be a pretty good base coat for these if you prefer a slightly more purple finish. 
Now any cloth straps you want to do, rack our flesh, and there's generally not too many of these on these orc bikes. At the same time, I reckon that Rakarth Flesh makes a really good uh, base coat for teeth and what have you. You're going to want a smaller brush, <laughs> but get in there and do his teeth and fingernails at the same time. Now, some of these bikes have got big, uh, like, bones, teeth and stuff like that for bigger creatures that the orc has hunted and lashed to his vehicle. <laughs> Go ahead, bit of Xandri dust to base coat these. Any little bits of gold jewellery your orc is wearing, just get in with a bit of Retributor armour. Or Balthazar gold if you fancy, it's up to you. Now comes the fun part. <laughs> I've got here, uh, I'm going to call this my stippling brush, because this is what we're going to use it for. This is one of these cheap old brushes, and I've taken a pair of scissors and just cut the tip. You know, I've left enough there that there's plenty for it to, for the bristles to move around, but it is just stabbagey. All right, so you're just tapping away there on the palette. When we do this on the model, what we're going to get is some random edges. Now, what I'm doing is I want to go fairly close to the edges of the, uh, of the I guess, surface of what we're stippling on here. And I'll go right up to it in some cases. But if there's any little black bits left near the edges, it doesn't matter because of two reasons. We want a fairly random looking pattern anyway. And secondly, what we'll get is this appearance that, you know, sandblasting and, and just general wear has kind of worn away the paint and we've got then black primer and silver metal underneath. So all you need to do is just jab this on. And like I said, you can be, you can be pretty generous with this. Um, I am going to cover most of my areas in some yellow. Um, I recommend use the box art as a guide. Um, I'm probably not going to go quite as yellow as the box art does though. But all you need to do is just pick some areas. Under the old engine cowling here is a good spot. And paint these in with your clan colours. Now I'm using Avalanche Sunset for my uh, bad moons. But you might decide you want to paint this red or purple or whatever. Okay, I'm using this straight out of the pot. <laughs> heresy upon heresies, but because of how I'm applying it, you know, I'm going to get little random splotches, and that's what I want. So go around now, and take your time, and just jab in some areas that are going to be yellow. Now I'll just come back briefly to show you how I'm doing the, uh, the front here. Same principle, just stab away with some paint. Try and avoid any areas that you've already painted. If you do get it onto your... Uh, your bone and what have you, don't worry too much because you can turn around and very quickly base cut over those again. But you'll see I'm leaving some of the recesses black too. I'm really just looking for a nice overall yellow, which looks like it's been dinged up a little bit. Okay, and all I'm doing, like I said, is just jabbing the paint on. These, I thoroughly recommend make yourself a stippling brush out of either an old busted one or a cheap one. And you're going to have a lot of fun with these. Okay, these make for great, <laughs> great painting tools. Now, how easy does that look? And we've got a yellow bike, nice and battered looking. Now, there are a couple of areas where I've gone over with the yellow where I want things to be metallic. So all I'm going to do is just fill in those metal areas again. This is the bonus of doing this stage before we've done any sort of complicated highlighting or dry brushing over the top, anything like that. You can very quickly... Fix up these little mistakes. Just like Bob Ross, we don't make mistakes, we just have happy accidents. Now I've spent some time, I have fixed up a couple of little areas that I missed, so I've painted in some green, um, but for the most part, that was it, okay? Just any little areas you want to fix up, you can get to that before this stage, because this is my favorite. Get yourself the biggest brush you fancy. Um, I do recommend bigger is better for this. And some Agrax Earth Shade. And we're just going to go over the whole model, okay? You don't want it to really bucket in and hide in the recesses. You know, you can move this around if this looks too dark in any areas. But however you choose to do it, the whole model, Agrax Earth Shade, have some fun. Now, after plenty of time to dry, this is what we've got. And I'm really pleased with what that Agrax Earth Shade does. 
just brings out all of the detail, gives us that nice shading, and dulls down some of the colors a little. But in the case of the yellow, you know, we want bright. We want orky yellow. This is pretty cool, like in person. I quite like how this looks, but I think we can do better. Now, there's two options here. I'm going to use Hexos Pale Sun, which is a dry paint. If you've got it, say, for example, you base a lot with it, then Tyrant Skull can actually work quite well here as well. But I want cartoony yellow. So I'm going to load up my small dry brush because I want a fair bit of you know, control with this. Let's just quickly flick the edge of my base, see what we'll get left behind. And then I'm going to go along just some of these yellow bits. I don't want to put on too much, but I just want to really bring out very sharper edges of this yellow. See how it catches along the, the curves there. Let's just go around and I'm going to do this to all of the yellow. Okay, so up on these spikes, up around the console here. And this is why you want a smaller dry brush for this. As you go around, if you do end up getting it splattered along any edges, don't worry too much. Okay, it's going to help us sort of solidify that really grimy orc paint style. But let's just go around now and let's lightly Hexos Pale Sun. Just some areas we want to be a nice bright yellow. Now we've got some definition back on the edges, but it's quite pale. I mean, Hexos Pale Sun. <laughs> what I've got here is Cassandora Yellow. And obviously, if you were painting red, you would use uh, Caribou Crimson. Blue, you'd use Dragonhoff Nightshade. Obviously, just pick which color you are using, okay? So we're painting yellow. I'm using yellow. Gave yourself a slightly smaller shade brush than we used for the whole model. And just go around now, and we'll fill in all of these yellow areas again. You'll see quite quickly what it does to that yellow. It makes it a bit richer. So take your time and fill this all in again. Now with that last shade dried, we've got a really rich yellow. I love how that comes out. It's not bright, but like I said, it's rich and it's deep. And I love that look. If you wanted a brighter yellow, all you'd need to do is after your first stippling, put over a brighter yellow, something like aerial yellow, you could even go all the way to Dawn Yellow if you wanted a really bright uh, finish because the shade over the top is going to bring that all together. But that's up for you to decide. Now I've got here a uh, Warboss Green, funnily enough, and we're just going to quickly highlight his skin. A little bit of water. And I recommend with these guys you want to be quite, I guess, impressionist, you know. You don't need to go all the way into the recesses. Just pick some high points on the skin. And highlight those. Now you could do that skin even lighter, uh, do some final highlights with some Skarsnet Green, uh, but I'm gonna skip that to be perfectly honest. What I've got now is some Necron Compound, my small dry brush again, and I'm just gonna very carefully flick along just some of this metal again, just to brighten it up. Um, if I'm getting anywhere too close to where I've already painted, I will skip it, if I'm perfectly honest. This is just to get us a bit more contrast back on some of these metal areas. But like I said, this one this is a bit more on the old uh, optional side. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of Ushabti bone on the bones. And I'll do some Screaming Skull on his teeth at the same time. Just grab yourself a small brush and just flick towards the tips of these bone areas. And like I said, you can do the same on his teeth. Nice and easy. Okay, I lied. Let's do a little bit of Skarsnet Green, just so that we can see how it would look if you chose to do this. You want to be sparing with it. So just along the back and knuckles, and ear tips, maybe their bottom lip, blah, 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 give a little bit of shape there. And just along a couple of the high points of his skin, okay? You don't want to put much of this on at all. And with those last couple of little details finished, our painting is complete. Hooray! But I mentioned earlier that this was a temporary base because I was going to put them onto a bigger one. The reason why I've done that is not just to be able to handle the model, but because of the fact getting under these things, especially the bikes, with your basing material can be a real pain in the neck. So instead, it's easier to pull them off these temporary bases. And funnily enough, Here's one I prepared earlier. 
Now to fix this guy to his new base, you can use super glue, uh, but I'm going to use Uhu or Yuhu, depending on where in the world you're from. You want to be careful with this because it can get real quickly out of hand. <laughs> But this is the best stuff by far that I've come across for this because it dries nice and clear. So let's just line them up. Probably helps if I do that on the camera. Make sure he's in the center of his base. And there we go. We'll leave that for a few minutes to go tacky and dry and then we'll put some tufts on him. And there he is, ready to go ripping across the sands of Vigilus to go smack some of the orcs heads in because what else are you going to do when you can't get through a void shield to Clobus of Imperials? <laughs> this was a lot of fun. And I just want to point out how easily this basic technique, you know, stippling on that base color will work on anything. Buggies, uh, battle wagons, even knobs armor. Okay. Anything that you want to be a brighter color, you can very easily just smash it on there and jobs are good. Okay. You don't have to reinvent the wheel to paint orcs. So as always, feel free, you can get in touch, pop a comment in the old box below. My Facebook and Twitter are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.